In the language we're using in this course, and in any other interpreted programming language, there are two modes which you, in which you can write programs, interactively or in stored programs. Let's start with interactively. If you'll open Google Chrome and navigate your web browser to the address bit.ly slash REPL-110, so bit.ly slash REPL-110, and press enter, you will see a blank screen. And so here we need to now open up our interactive programming console. And in Google Chrome, there are special shortcuts for that. On Windows, you'll press Control, Shift, and J at the same time. And on Mac, you'll press Control, Option, and J at the same time. And what this will do is it will open up your interactive programming console. You may see an error in this, in which case you can press this clear button to make it go away. Uh, you don't need to worry about it if you do. So just to give you a quick sense of what you're seeing here, the tool we are using is the console tool, and we are going to be able to write lines of programming code into this console. And when we press enter, the computer is gonna take that line and do whatever we asked it to do. It's gonna run our line of code. So let's try it out. Uh, if you will try typing the command print and then followed by an open parenthesis followed by a double quote hello world followed by a double uh, quote and a closing parenthesis press enter and what you'll see is through the magic of interactive programming hello world this text has appeared on your screen we don't yet know what this word string means we don't yet know why we're putting parentheses here and double quotes here We'll learn about these things in the next few videos, uh, but this is a real line of code. So congrats on writing your first line of code if this is your first time programming. We can also write commands like print one plus one. And what we'll see is that when we give the computer this command, it's going to do a little work on our behalf and simplify this numerical addition expression down to some result and do some computation for us. You might be curious, well, what does this undefined mean? Well, uh, the short story is, and we'll talk about this in more depth, but when we give a command print, we're not saying go send this to some paper printer, we're saying output this to the screen. And so when we output the result that we, that, that whatever we tell it to print, so one plus one is what we're telling the computer to print, uh, it's gonna output that to, to the screen and it's not gonna result in any value back. Uh, but if we wanted to, uh, we could say, you know, one plus one, without printing, and you'll notice that nothing changed in our browser window. We don't actually see any output here, but behind the scenes in our program, when we want to evaluate one plus one, the computer's telling us the way that it evaluated that was two. We can also jump forward to, and, and give you a preview of something else to come. If I say hello uh, plus uh, the number uh, 110, what we will see is, what does it mean to add some text in a number? Well, we're gonna get some larger amount of text back. We'll talk about what this operation is. It's the concatenation operator in a future video. So don't worry about that. So that's interactive programming. And we'll be doing, we'll be making use of this as we want to play around with, with ideas. Uh, and what we're actually encountering is something called a REPL, right? It's a read, evaluate, print loop. And what that means is when you press enter, these steps that a computer is taking, is it's going to read what you just wrote as your command and translate that from the programming language which you wrote into machine code, which the processor is able to follow. It's going to evaluate that, gonna let the processor work through the steps that you just gave it to follow one by one. The REPL will print back the results to us and the loop part of the REPL is we're just gonna go back to the start, let you type another command in and rinse and repeat. Continue doing this sequence of steps over and over again for as long as you want. Programming in a REPL is really great for learning and tinkering with ideas. Uh, but the downside to it is that when you refresh your browser or restart your program, any work that you had is lost and there's no real good way for you to save it, right? So if I go back to my browser and I press refresh, we're back at a clean slate. It's as if no lines of code had ever been written and run inside of this little program. And so a REPL is really for experimentation and trying out ideas. As we move forward in this course, and in a future video, we'll talk more about it, 
we're going to be working with stored programs. So the idea of a stored program is it will take all those lines that we may have written into a REPL and write them into a file that we can save on our computer instead. And once we've stored them in that file, the uh, the the, compute, the, pro, the program isn't actually run immediately or nothing happens immediately uh, until we save the file and ask the computer to execute the program. And when it does that, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that file with all of the lines of programming code that we gave it, uh, that we store in it, and it's gonna quickly run through each of those lines one by one as if we had typed them as fast as you could imagine into the REPL console. But fundamentally, there's not a difference between uh, writing each of your lines of code one by one inside of the REPL or putting them into a file and allowing the computer to read them very quickly one by one uh, from a stored program. So the power of stored programs is that we can start to write larger programs with tens to hundreds to thousands of lines of code. And when we restart our program, the computer just reloads all of it from scratch as if we're starting over. This makes reuse of our code much more easy and the ability for us to transmit our programs and have other people run our programs on their computers or their phones possible.